Now to the women's Tour of Flanders recap, 152.5 kilometer course with a similar, well, identical last 20 kilometers to the men's race with the Artequamont Paderberg combo, combo with a 10k plus flat run into the line. They've got the Molenberg, Malbastrat, Berendries, Falkenberg, then feed zone. It's all very similar. Bertenhoe to Canaryberg, Tyenberg, etc. So it's just shorter at the start, but the way the climbs are put together, particularly in the last half or third of the race, almost identical. We've got Van Vleuten, Van der Breggen, Norsgaard, Longerborg, Guinea here, all the big names, Sestigl, Trip Ludwig, etc. So, yeah, the live coverage started with about 60 kilometres to go, and it was all together. No breakaway, no early moves. I think Benji, personally, they could make the women's races longer and maybe there'd be more furtive breakaways. It would mirror the men's race more. I don't know. But, yeah, there was no break. It was all together and they got towards the ninth climb then with 52 k to go to the Berg Ten Hote. SD Works, Jumbo Visma Women's, Bike Exchange and Live were all pacing. A lot of Quebecis here as well, I should have mentioned. And there was a small split, but nothing major before the Canary Berg, which is where the first of the big moves started to happen. Annemiek van Vleuten, European champ on Movistar, winner of Dwar's Tour out of Kasha, Neviadoma, went hard on the Canary Berg, but everyone was marking her, like, right on her wheel. <laughs> and she led a group of 20 with all the names I've already mentioned in this podcast. Do you agree with what I said about the length of the course, Benji, or do you think it's a feature of smaller teams, or what do you think it is? Hmm, I think that the course is honestly good. 153 kilometers, that's uh, one True, of the longer ones, longer one. I think, from the women's calendar. Yeah. Um, I personally don't know the science behind the length of a women's race versus a men's race. That has been asked to Twitter on me lately, and I just couldn't answer it. So if anybody has like a good paper on that or something, I'd yeah. be so down to read that and uh, get into that a bit. But I generally can't tell you if that's a lot or not. I know that some races make their races different and i think uh, i don't know if it was a million or something but one of those types of races that had instead of like eight times a hill it had like one time the hill or two times a hill and then it's like uh it's a very different race then because then it's just yeah an attempt on one hill and not on like a, an attrition fight and then the race can be very different but i don't think that's the case here i think that it's still very much a difficult uh gobble race or a flounders for women 39 k to go they were going towards the Tyenberg. That's where it crested. And Cordon Rago had slipped away. So Van Leuten had pushed on the Canaryberg. No big gaps. Counter from Cordon Rago. Great move. Trek Segafredo trying to SD Works. SD Works, the French national champion, trying to force SD Works to chase rather than having following who is here, Peters, etc., being able to attack. 25-second gap. Big, pretty big gap. Eventuated, she made it over the time. Berg, Florchi Mackay was pacing for DSM. Uh, a lot of the teams were working, and they've got the Kreuzberg Hotond, which is not the hardest combo. It's not as hard as the Quadmont. Paderberg inside the final 30k still caught on a go. She's extended her gap out to 50 seconds. SD works, not eating into it at all. Trek were able to all sit in. She's got Longa Borghini back in the national champs jersey of Italy. I think Voss is back in the is in the leaders jersey of Women's World Tour. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. She was in a pinky purple jersey today. Van Dyke, Diagnan, all able to sit in while she's up the road. And Kreuzberg comes and goes still. Cordon Rigo up the road. And she's French time trial champion either this year or last year, if I'm not mistaken, maybe both. Well, definitely last year, I think. And Soraya Paladin was chasing eventually for Live Racing. She got the gap to 20 seconds um, over the Kreuzberg, but no one was really chasing either. And Cordon Rago, the gap was at like six seconds between her and Paladin. Paladin we saw at Dwar's Duel or Hen Favelhem. Yeah, it's Hen Favelhem. Yeah, Hen Favelhem with Longa Borghini, very strong. And she was even working with Longa Borghini in the finale. So 
definitely someone good to work with for Cordon Rago. And then, yeah, I just think Cordon Rago could have sat up a little bit earlier. Anyway, going towards the Quartermont, Paderberg combo, all the favourites are in the group except for Benji Kopecky. What happened with her and where was it? Well, Kopecky, just before they turn onto the Outer Quartermont, you've got this uh, dive down to the Outer Quartermont. Then I think a good 100 or 200 meters before they get to the Outer Quartermont, we saw that a rider was pushing somebody else. And the other person was Kopecky. Her teammate was trying to keep her on her bike. And they had to change bike because something was going wrong with the bike of Lada Kopecky. From what I saw, it seemed to be a chain issue, but I'm completely unsure about it. And because of that, she basically started the outer quadramont, like, yeah, a good 250 meters behind. And that's obviously not ideal if you want to uh, be at the front on the outer quadramont. Just at the moment, the race is definitely going to explode once again. And I think that at the earlier aspects of the outer quadramont, I was uh, I was thinking this is going pretty decent. This is going pretty decent for the entire group there not having one rider that is exploding here until Anna van der Breggen came to the front and she kept mashing the pedals because she also had Demi Vollering in that group. I don't know whether they were deciding to go for Vollering by having van der Breggen pace because on cobbles you don't really know that if the rider at the front is their leader or not because they might just be setting pressure and the other might just be in trouble. And van der Breggen kept on pushing that towards the top of the Auto Quadramont. A lot of people dropped off the bag, but the riders who stayed up there there were some interesting names there. Obviously, Elisa Longo-Borghini was there. Annemiek van Vleuten was still there. Vollering, the teammate of Anna van der Breggen, was still there. Two riders for FDG, and that was uh, Cavalli Your favorite and combo. Utrecht Ludwig. <laughs> yes, the favorite combo, because it's very interesting to see how their tactics employ in races. Was there anybody else next to the names? I Renault, know, or... national champion you ever mentioned. Yeah, of course. Spring. Grace Brown, the best Australian rider at the moment. And yes. maybe they listened to our preview. Maybe they came to their senses. But Bike Exchange <laughs> were using Roy to close down moves earlier in the race, the national champ, for Grace Brown. Uh, and I think that was a good move. And that really paid off for them today. So Grace Brown's in that group looking good. Uh, she actually, sorry, they get over the Quarmont, under Van der Breggen, not like a nuclear attack. It's kind of like when she's on the murder hoy last year and she's just in the saddle doing her thing. No one's going to attack except maybe a peak Van Vleuten and she's just dropping people off the back. They've then got that big dipper and it was a pretty big gap, like the Voss group. Voss just slipped off the back, Benji. I thought she was in the group. She was starting in a good position. She just cracked. And anyway, she she slipped off the back. They got the big famous dipper between the Quartermont and the Paderberg and Brown used that the descent and used the momentum to attack. and. They got a, she got a pretty good gap until Annemiek van Vleuten bridged. She was initially pacing on the front, then someone lost her wheel and onto the Paderberg they went. She had a small gap, those two, and van Amie, Annemiek van Vleuten was working pretty well. It must have been only three, four seconds, maybe even less, before they got into the Paderberg. They were basically caught at the base and then van Vleuten attacked again or maybe even just riding her pace she nearly crashed she was going all over the place she had to put her hand onto the barriers on the left hand side but still extended that gap by 10 seconds minimum by the time she got to the Paderberg riders are zigzagging behind her Grace Brown dropping a lot it was mainly van der Breggen but they just had to catch her they just had to try and make that move across and Grace Brown really cooked SD works because maybe head-to-head on the Paderberg, both at the same equivalent freshness without the chase beforehand. Maybe van der Breggen's right on van Vleuten's wheel, but not with what just happened beforehand. Gap was good. I thought with that group all together, Brown, Cavalli, Ludwig, Longaborghini, Vollering, van der Breggen, Brennauer, that's a lot of firepower. Van der Breggen and Brennau got good TT. Brown is strong. FDJ have two teammates. They were using Ludwig to actually work for Cavalli, I think, although Ludwig had been losing wheels before, so she was really tired. And Longaborghini didn't pull Benji after the Paderberg with a 10-second gap to Van Vleuten with 11 or 10 Ks to go. Was it tiredness 
or was it strategy? What was the reason for it? I don't know. I think that was tiredness on the uh, on the path that everybody was pretty much on their limit and that uh, group that eventually formed after Annemiek van Vleuten. And I think we saw that mostly from the couples in the group. And I think I noticed that mostly with the likes of Utrecht Ludwig and Cavalli due to Utrecht Ludwig being on paper the rider with a lesser sprint of the two. So I'd say she goes to the front and starts riding like crazy. And again, I think Volering and Van der Breggen were also there in a the duo. But in that group, I think there just was not enough power anymore to catch yeah her that's the at problem the front. and i don't think that i really saw moments where the tempo died out it was really staying around the same amount of seconds 9 10 11 12 13 11 12 13 11 just kept on like that and i think that everybody was just kind of done i don't think they um even with cooperating at their best capabilities because probably some people in their saved energy I think it would have been a uh, really hard to close down of Van Vleuten here. Did you think that they had an opportunity of chasing that back? Yeah, I think so. I think it's almost a trap having teammates because mm-hmm. what they did was they put Volering on the front and just kind of left her there doing a lot of the work. But then you're mm-hmm. basically having Demi Volering doing a head-to-head TT against Van Vleuten after the Paderberg, and she's actually going to lose time. So you're better off having Volering ride for 90 seconds absolutely max and then blow up leave the group and then have yep. van der Breggen try and bridge a five second gap four second gap on her own i think doing the slow bridge with her and then ludwig eventually came through but no one knew there wasn't good coordination is actually a slow death towards van vleuten who will extend that gap you know her time trial prowess and she's back on form she's sort of dwell's door Three Ks to go, 11-second lead. Longo Borghini has been sitting on the whole time, not pulling through, eventually starts to come through when the gap is out to like 19 seconds. But by this point, we know the race is pretty much done. Van der Breggen didn't really have it either at this point. And despite Bernal, Grace Brown trying to all work together, it just wasn't enough. When they came into the finishing straight, we saw that Annemiek van Vleuten was going to win this race and she won easily by over 15 seconds. Time for the post-up. Second win from her and the double for Movistar on the weekend with Valverde yesterday, her yeah. on Wednesday. Great time for them. They must be happy that they're having some positive results and, yeah. Yeah, van yeah, but... It's back. Yeah? I think that this isn't their get out of jail free card for their men's couple team. Let that be clear. Uh, I think that their men's <laughs> couple team nice. is pretty terrible. Jamova star. Uh, Garcia Martina hasn't done shit all year. So <laughs> I want to call that out. Aww. Women's team on the cobbles is far better than the men's team on the cobbles. Yeah. Again, well, we said that in the preview. On a bike. Yep. In a preview, we were like, Norsgaard van Vleuten. <laughs> I mean, it's probably. To beat the men's team head to head straight up. Like, Send Von Vleuten like, to the men's race and she might top yeah. 20. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, great result for Van Vleuten. Then the reduced bunch sprint, thankfully, second Lisa Brennau, the German, German national champ, and Grace Brown, third for the Australian, her second monument podium. She came second in Liège last year behind Diagnon. Third, sorry, that was third, Elisa Long and Borghini missing out on the podium. Fourth, Following fifth, Cavalli sixth, surprising actually, Ultra Ludwig seventh, Van der Breggen eighth, Rusa ninth, Brody Mai tenth. So three FDJ in the top ten. Brody Mai was behind. Um, Brody, sorry, I'm reading off the Twitter handle. <laughs> it's Brody Chapman, uh, to be clear. Um, but I think a few team. Well, actually, I've got the. That's different to the results I've got on PCS. So maybe maybe don't take my word for that exactly. <laughs> They've got Christian Faulkner as 10th for Tim Tipko and the UCI Women's World Tour has got... Uh, I don't think Chapman's 10th. I don't believe that. All right, well... I could be wrong, but... She's an Aussie, so that. let me just say she came in the top 10. How about that? But, that, that, that but in all seriousness, like Trek Benji, <laughs> do you think... Yeah. They messed up anything today? Do you think they burned Cordon Rigaud too early? Or do you think it's just a case of Van Dyke and Diagnan are not 
as good at getting in the front group as last year. Yeah, I think it's a lot about Gordon Ago is she's looking better than previous years, personally, I think. Uh, I think she's played a role in, in uh, multiple races in a row now for the team. And Longo Borghini, uh, again, consistently up there with the splits that she needs to be in. But they weren't strong enough when Van Vleuten went. And if you're not the strongest on the pile to the bed, you lose 10 to 13 seconds on top. Then it's going to be hard bringing that back, even with the group surrounding you. So I think they just lost from a better rider today. Quite simple as that. They could have potentially uh, had a strategy to try and form that away. But in, in hindsight, I wouldn't know how with the riders that did make the split eventually. Like if Dijkman and Van Dijk are not in that split, then I don't think they were strong enough to implement a strategy that could change the outcome of the race here. Yeah, I think teams like Bike Exchange with Grace Brown did their absolute best and with the resources they had to get a podium as good. Brenauer, after a good result at Ken Fablehem, third maybe in the sprint or second behind Mariana Voss. Um, again, she must be happy with second with no team support in the finale. SD Works, I think it's as Benji said, when Van Vleuten is Van Vleutening, there's limited things you can do <laughs> like she just puts 10 seconds into you in the face on Paderberg and then TT's away like there's only yeah. so much you can do I mean if Follering doesn't have the legs to close it down and neither does Van der Breggen then whether Longa Borghini pulls or not I don't think would have made the difference either do you think Van Vleuten is looking exactly the same as in the last couple of years Benji pre that crash do you think Worlds last year with the broken hand kind of made us forget too quickly that she is the best? Mm, I think it's just a, a bit different because last year we had a total domination by Van der Breggen and so far this year that has not been the case. I think that Van der Breggen was just plainly the better one all round in women's cycling last year. And I don't know. That hand probably did skew our view a bit towards the end of the season after the Giro Rossa, but I still think that I never really saw Von Vleuten as a weaker rider. I think that I think I just expected the Movistar transfer to have more influence to that. And honestly, looking back at the team where she was last year, I think she had more support. And perhaps that is the reason that I personally believe that we might have expected less due to the change to Movistar, but Van Vleuten is a monster on whatever team you put her on, clearly. Yeah, I thought that too. You know, new equipment, new change of scenery, but it doesn't matter. And the way she wins doesn't really need a team. We said that in the preview before. It's She's going to do what she's going to do. And I think the Grace Brown move, if you want to go and watch, I think that... Move from Grace Brown, followed from Van Vleuten, really changed this race and put Vollering and Van der Breggen under pressure before they expected it. I think they're expecting to follow her on Paderberg, and she threw a spanner in the works in the SD works uh, before they got there. That Benji liked that one. But <laughs> any last thoughts from the women's race? We have to mention it, Benji. The the littering yeah. issue. Um, it the, backfired already. Yeah, uh, we said it. Before, so we, for full transparency, we recorded the men's race recap and then went and watched the women's race. And in time, we said in the men's recap, it's not going to be long until a big rider in a big race situation litters and they don't get penalised. And on Twitter, we've already seen footage of Van Bluten littering, throwing a bit on the same as share with 42 k's to go, and it's out of a littering zone. So it should be a DSQ. We were not going to talk about it, but it's been publicized now and the podium's done, etc. because we think the rule is stupid. Like we're not going to dob people in, but it's been publicized. What do you think, Benji? Like would you feel better if Van Vleuten had been disqualified? No, but I'd feel better if Cher was not. <laughs> it doesn't make yeah. it, yeah, like... I think everybody that watched his race is happy that Van Vleuten is not disqualified except for the people that ended second and third in the race. Yeah. Um, She's the strongest. But 
it bugs me so much that it's between the men's and the women's race of the same event on the same day, there's already a, already a huge difference when it comes to the appliance of the uh, of the rule. And that inconsistency annoys the hell out of me because I think that's kind of falsifying the race for some people. I just there would have had in the men's race an extra rider to take care of. And right here, Von Vleuten, yeah, she's kept in for the same thing. I think they both should have been kept in. I don't think Van Vleuten should have been DQ'd for this. Uh, so far, we've got no news of that. We waited till the podium to confirm this because we don't want to kind of put it out there on the on the podcast as first thing and be the people that call this out because I still believe that she should not be DQ'd for that and you as well. But uh, it's 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 just fucking annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's stupid because, like, we talk to La Flamme Rouge a lot and because we're degenerates, we watch every kilometer of every race live. We even listen to race radio and all that sort of stuff and we see everything, got people replaying, sending us clips and there's so many people that littered today and it's going to be impossible unless the UCI, I don't know, spends 10 grand every race hiring 50 people to watch the race and tell them <laughs> that to catch it all and ma- I know guy, that's not an excuse. One guy with a Twitter account is enough, mate. <laughs> yeah, true. Twitter's enough. Just, I mean, that is actually what they use for VR. They just troll Twitter and that's why we were worried about mentioning the Van Vleuten thing. And imagine how stupid it would look if the women had this fantastic race, all the favourites in front group, big attack on Canaryburg, Paderberg, all great, good result, clean racing. And then afterwards, it's like, nah, she threw a bit on. And it was near people. Uh, people went and picked it up, I assume. And she got disqualified. That would just make the race look like a joke. And it also changes, like, that happened at 40 k to go. And then she's competing in the sprint. It changes the race situation behind, you know, the way Brenauer and all the others ride. Like, what if SD Works knew they were racing for first? they wouldn't have pulled so much and then they would have attacked with Vollering and Van der Breggen and they would have quote-unquote won. It's so stupid. So anyway, we've said enough on it. Otherwise, thankfully, they missed it. So unlucky, go share. But Van Vleuten, she's looking terrifying this year, Benji, and I don't think she's going to stop here. I think Movistar are going to get their, their money back. <laughs> and more on that signing. SD Works, we said, what could someone do? or teams do to beat them, well, you need one person, Annemiek van Vleuten, going nuclear. And that's what happened today. Any last thoughts on the women's Ronda, Benji? No, it was a good race. Um, I do personally don't like these race situations for the viewing. I really enjoy it if it's like after the Paterberg, there's still tension between two or three riders at the front. And I think in this situation, that's not the case. And I don't know. Personally, I want more action after the Paterberg, and today that was not really the case. <laughs> On I both races, how, or yeah. just this? In the men's race, it really wasn't that, because in the men's race, you've still got that doubt, oh, is Asgreen going to beat Van der Poel, or is Van yeah. der Poel going to beat Asgreen, are they going to attack here? But with Van Vleuten, when she attacked on, on the Paterberg, and the, the gap was 11 to 12 seconds, I, I had like an 80% thought process that, Van Vleuten was gone and she wasn't going to get taken back. And yeah, oh, that, that's less of an feeling. Yeah. Okay. I thought because the SD works numbers, but yeah, you were right. Yeah. In yeah. the end, uh, I guess everyone's got their work cut out this year. So that's all from us. We hope you enjoyed the women's Ronda recap. If you're listening on YouTube or this entire Ronda recap, if you're listening on the podcast players, we've had a busy weekend and uh, we'll get this all up for you. ASAP, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, listening to all the uh, the monuments and the previews, we've done MSR and Flanders so far, Roubaix's cancelled, but if you've enjoyed it all, we've got a Ko-Fi link if you want to support the podcast or alternatively a like on the YouTube channel or a review on your podcast players is all we need uh, for your support. But we get that support in droves and we really appreciate it. See you next time. Ciao.